Hey, I'm Chris, and today we're going to be building a deck using a floating foundation system, seriously increasing the outdoor living space for our friends here. Ours is the 200 square foot deck, situated on a slight slope. We're going to be using eight joists at 16 inch centers with 24 posts sat in tough blocks to adjust for the slope. To tie it all together, we're using Mirabao decking boards, adding steps to the back and building a fireplace to create a wonderful outdoor oasis. We're going to take you through step by step in this video on how easy it is to do yourself. The first step is to mark out the dimensions of our deck using a straight edge and spray paint. Now we know our tough blocks will sit just inside these lines and that's the ground we want to level and compact. There was a slight change of plans on the stairs and you'll see that later in this video. All right, so as you can see, one of the challenges with building on a site like this is as the ground drops away, we're going to have to make sure we keep our deck level. Starting on this side, it'll be nice and low. But as we end up down on this end of the deck, we're going to be a good two and a half feet off the ground. And we're going to show you how we come through that challenge today in this video. Okay, today we're using this sod cutter here. It's going to make your life a lot easier. You can do this by shovel. If you don't own one of these, there you can rent them most places. Here for this job, we're just setting it to three quarters inch depth and then let it roll. We're going to get this grass out real quick this way. Here we're loosening the topsoil so we can easily scoop it up with a shovel. All right, we've used our sod cutter, we've cut up all the grass. Now we're just gonna dig it out, get our space later. You can set this aside and if the uh, homeowner wants to use it again, that, that's perfectly good turf. Now that we've dug up all the topsoil, we can move on to the next step, which is compacting the ground. So at this point, we're just gonna dig a trench wide enough for the compactor and the tough block to sit in. Compact the soil, Fill that with a bit of paper base. We're going to be just one foot in from the edge for our first tough block. Measure that out. Dig our trench, and we just need each individual tough block to sit level. So now that we've dug our trench, we've just leveled off one terrace here. We're just checking that we want to be level in this direction, which we're pretty much there. Here we're just going to put a bit of a paper base down next, compact that, sit our tough block right on top of that. We're creating four terraces along the slope. The first one foot in, and then we've marked every five feet after that. We're laying down our paver base, which we're compacting down with our compactor. Now that we've got our terraces tampered down with our paver base, we're ready to get a really nice level surface which the tough block can sit on. For that, we're gonna be just scooping out a bit of our road-based gravel. Just make a small area, tamp that down, and there we're gonna worry about getting each individual tough block nice and level. Now, they don't need to be level relative to each other, just it will sit level, and we'll show you how that's done. I'm just scooping just enough gravel to cover the area of the base of the tough block. As you practice, this process becomes extremely quick and you can level a single block in about 30 seconds. Lightly tamp it down, and then we're gonna check our level. And then we've got it. Now this tough block is sitting beautifully level, however it's not necessarily in the same plate as our first block that we've laid back there. And that's not important, you're going to see how we account for that when we put our posts into these. Now the alternative to this would be digging holes and filling them with concrete, which typically requires a minimum of 24 to 48 hours to cure. By using tough block, you can get a deck like this done in a single day, whilst also reducing the number of tools and materials required. We're placing down the first four tough blocks in the corners so we can get started on the outer frame. At this point, we're ready to cut our joists. Just going to cut to whatever length you need for your deck. In our case, we're cutting to 16 feet. Measure your joists. You've got eight cuts to make. Mark it and get cutting. Even though we're using treated lumber, it's a good idea to seal the exposed ends where you've made your cuts. Okay, at this point we're going to stick in our first joist to help us get a measurement for how high of a rise we have down on that end. We've already marked off one foot in, 
for our first tough block base. Just gonna keep it tucked back a bit from the edge of the deck so you can't see it when the deck is finished. So here we're just gonna slot it into our tough block. And then on this end, we're gonna rise it up and clamp it until the board is level. And that's gonna give us some measurement for our first post. And we'll show you how that's done now. Oh, mate, you, you are right on it, dude. Down a hair. Yeah, perfect. That's it. Here we're gonna measure from the base of the tough block where our post is going to sit, right to the bottom of the joist here. Got 18 inches and seven eighths. We're now ready to cut our upright post. So I've measured out my 18 7 8 inches. But on top of that, I want to cut an additional length for the height of your joist. In my case, another five and a half inches on top of that. So this is where I'm gonna make my cut. The rest will be used for notching in, which we'll show you in just a moment. Okay, so I've got my post cut to the height of my deck, and then we're just gonna make these additional cuts to adjust for the height of the joist as well. What you wanna do is you wanna measure the width of your joist and set your circular saw to that width to make that depth of a cut into your post. Make a series of close cuts, grab your hammer, we're just going to level that surface with a chisel. Once you've got the end of the post cut out, it's going to allow your joist to sit right on top of there. Therefore all of the weight bearing portion of the deck is gonna be coming directly down into the major axis of the post, rather than having it stuck to the side and all of that weight being held just by your hardware, or your screws or whatever you've got in there. So that's why we take this extra step. Now, because we have made a fresh cut in what is treated timber, uh, again, we're just gonna take an extra few moments and just treat that again. Again, we're just gonna extend the life in our deck in any way we can, prevent rot, Something that takes just a few moments, it's well worth it. There you go. So here we're placing that post we just checked in and connecting it to the joist we leveled earlier. The post fits snug into the four inch post slot and it's checked out, so it'll create a strong base for the joist. Here we're marking out our joists on the opposite side and going through the same process as before by leveling and then measuring the height for the post. We've gone and attached our joist hangers to our end joist at 16 inch centers, which is recommended for a rigid base. Okay, so to this point you can see we've got the outer joists of our deck set. It's really important at this point we're checking that the deck is both level and square. To check for level, simple. You just set your level on either of the four sides and you can even run a long runner across and set your level on that as well. We've done that, we're level right across. Next, before you start setting in those center joists, we wanna make sure our structure is square. There are two good ways of doing this. One is the three, four, five method. With the 345 method, you're gonna choose any unit you would like, whether it's five inches or one foot, and you wanna measure three units down one leg of your corner, four units down the other leg, mark them, and when you connect those two points via the hypotenuse, you should have five units distance. Now, if you do that in all four of your corners, you know you've got a square. The other, and possibly the more simple way, is just to measure the hypotenuse of your square. 
Just measure the diagonals. If they're the same distance, then you're square. At this stage, we're measuring the distance from the joist to our tough blocks, and then cutting posts to that height. Remember to add additional length for the portion of the post that will be checked out. We're fixing our joists to the joist hangers using galvanized nails and repeating the process you've seen earlier, which is to level the tough block using a tamp to compact our road base, measure the height required for our post, check the post in, and then connect that to the tough block and joist. We'll essentially repeat this sequence of events until we've built out the majority of our frame. We just have our final post to connect before our frame is complete. One thing to note as we end on day one is that due to covering each step on camera, it's extended our build time. But with a professional or an extra set of hands, you could easily cover this build in a day. Hey, we're back on site for day two of our deck build. We've done most of the structure here behind me. Today is just laying on those top decking boards, finishing up the siding. We're gonna put a couple nice steps around that high side. We'll plant a nice small garden around and make it look beautiful. All right, we just wanted to take a moment to show you one of the benefits of why we've chosen to use tough block for this deck build. Uh, it's really nice that it's been machined to fit standard two inch lumber. The slot right in there, give you a nice steady base. Those are for your cross joists. It'll fit a second size lumber if you've got a different size cut. It'll also fit our upright four by four post. Good and snug straight down, giving you a firm footing. Or if you twist it onto the 45, it'll accommodate slightly larger lumber. Okay, so at this point, we are running these braces down this side of the last bit of joist. It's because the joist itself is not supported from underneath by one of our upright posts. The reason for that is that we have our tough block sat back one foot by one foot in from the edge, and that'll just hide its footprint. Now that is the maximum allowed overhang, but then this outer joist isn't quite as strong. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna put in a number of these cross supports, and once we lay the decking on top of that, it'll be plenty strong to support the weight. As you'll see later on, this overhang along with our garden allows us to use fascia boards that make the tough blocks more discreet. All right, so for this phase, just before we get the decking down on top of our frame, we're laying down this uh, protective barrier. It just allows for if there would be any moisture between your decking and your frame, it'll stop any mildew or rot from getting a foothold. All right, we're ready to go. Our, we've, we've checked that our frame is square, it's level, we've now protected it against any rot. We're ready to go and start getting our decking on. Now the style of decking that we've chose uses like an invisible nail system. It works by a series of spacers, which slot into a groove on the side of our decking boards. Each one of those will be screwed on, the countersunk screw that sits right into each of the joists on each of the boards. For our end spacer, as we place it onto our last joist, we want to make sure that plastic bit isn't overhanging that last joist, because as we come along and trim our deck boards, we don't want to be cutting into plastic. Now, it's unlikely that all your lumber will be the same length, or even big enough to cover the width of your deck. For the first few boards, we've used our long cuts, and as we progress, we've used some of our shorter cuts, which creates a join in the middle. Now I want that joint to be centered and nice and tight. So I'm just gonna tap on my ends until I get that joint centered in the middle of the joist and with a nice tight fitting. We've made sure to space these shorter cuts throughout the length of the deck so that they're not all grouped together at one end. Make sure to focus these joints over the joist and alternate which joist to place the cut to create a random and a more visually pleasing pattern. Uh, periodically through your deck build, we want to check to make sure that we haven't built out one side farther than the other. We want to make sure we're coming square right across the deck with each of our deck boards. Now because we're not running a string line, the way we're going to check, we're going to periodically measure from the edge of our decking right down to the end of the deck. The measurement should be the same on either side. If it is, we're good to go. If not, we're just going to make small adjustments and I'll talk about that in one second. Let's just have a look to see how we're going thus far. One hundred ten and one half inches. One ten and one half inch. Now, if one of my measurements were to be off, 
rather than waiting to the end of the deck and trying to make all of those corrections at the end. With our next board, we can just adjust out slightly, recheck, and we're just gonna do that periodically until we reach the end of the deck. All right, you can see we're about three quarters of the way through putting on our decking, and it's got a great feel underfoot. It's quiet, it feels firm and solid, not shifting anywhere. And what you can see, one thing that we've done is we've laid these decking boards, is we've got them right up to this side as close as we can, and left all the extra overhang off this side. What we'll do eventually is we'll come down and we'll trim all those boards, giving us nice big pieces if we'd like to use around anywhere else on the deck, and minimizing wastage off of that end. So what we've just done is we've just ripped our last decking board because you'd be pretty lucky to have your board just fit perfectly right flush to the end of your deck. So all we've done is we've stuck that last board on, we've taken a measurement, and then ripped right down the board to get it to length. We've now got all our decking boards down so the job's complete for the finish. All we need to do now is come down the sides and trim off these extra bits. We're going to put some stairs on the end, make it look beautiful with a little garden. We're maximizing our lumber by using all of the trim pieces to create our stairs and fascia boards. This will be the first step off the back of the deck. Here you can see we've added paver stones leading to the fire pit to help tie in the deck to its surroundings. So we've just built the basic outside frame for our stair set going up to the high end of our deck. Here again, we're using tough block. We've just slotted a couple under using these uh, same joists slotted sideways into our tough block. And we're gonna have them up here again using the upright four x four posts to stabilize the upper set of stairs. Here we're using a Dremel to create grooves in the boards for our stairs to sit flush. Here we're using a miter saw to make 45 degree cuts into our fascia boards for a seamless finish, which you'll see when we trim the boards. Here our straight edge, which we've clamped down, provides our circular saw with a guide to create a perfectly straight edge. Here we're making sure to stop before our miter cut, which we'll finish off with a handsaw. We just finished our deck and we're really happy with how it came out. We've installed the stairs off the back high side of the deck and then just used two of our decking boards width just to cover down around the joists on the outside, right around the edge of the deck. Just for a little extra aesthetic, we've installed a small edging garden, a couple paver stones, and a beautiful fire pit, just to make this look good at the end. As a little extra, we've thrown on some furniture and added some lights. Now let's sit back and enjoy our backyard oasis. We hope you found this video useful and gave you some ideas for your own projects, showing you Tough Block's multiple applications and how it can save you both time and money. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on our next build.